You guys ready? I think in the last few years, there's been such a stirring and a change in my process as a songwriter. It becomes less about my own feelings and more about experiencing God's presence and wanting to make space for other people to experience God's presence. And so the songs are coming more like gospel songs these days. There's so much more of an exchange of energy and love and community that happens when we sing together. Gospel songs do that. They pull us up out of the moment we're in and they promise that the morning is coming. God is meeting us right now and he's inviting us right now and he's speaking to us right now. I want to stand and plant a flag in that place. I want to stand beside and participate in that in any way I can. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. Search and know our thoughts and anxious fears. Wash us in the fountain of your mercy.
God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. To you all hearts are open, Almighty God. To you all hearts are open, Almighty God. To you all. This one is a song from God's Highway, and I'd love to welcome my dear friend, Leslie. Please welcome Leslie Jordan.
as I have thought about what it is to make music for a living. I feel so grateful that I've been able to do this as my job. But in the last few years, there's been a finer point on the calling. The presence of God through sitting with His words and singing His words to new melodies, a lot of it's been in the Psalms. It feels like this place where, you know, songs like Steadfast, where we affirm who God is no matter how we feel. If I were to think of one word at this moment, in that place, the one word to me is comfort. Yes, He brings correction. Yes, He brings tenderness, and He brings whatever you need in the moment. I feel like this word of comfort is something that I have received from Him. It feels like it's become the thrust of work for me, that I would love to see God's comfort go out into the world and into the lives of my children and my neighbors. When I put pen to paper or when I pick up my guitar, that I want it to speak God's invitation, that I want it to make space for God's invitation. This idea of comfort feels so central to the work, and I feel a lot of joy getting to participate in it.
don't have any tattoos, but I have said that if I did have a tattoo, it would be the word yet. Um, and um, that tiny word is packed with the promise of God that um, we find ourselves in a, in a space between so often where things are not yet how we can understand them, and yet there is a day coming when all sad things will come untrue. So the next few songs are um, pointing us toward that promise of yet, and they are in the, in the form of the justice of God, that to wait on the Lord doesn't mean that we wait with passivity, but that we wait with um, fierceness, and there's a fierceness that is like an active waiting, which is the hope that we are, um, that we can trust that he is going to fight on our behalf, and that he intercedes on our behalf, and that he does that. Um, and I think we need to know before we're willing to weep and really cry the honest tears, we need to know that somebody's going to fight for us. Because otherwise, what's the point? Um, but as I've gone deeper into the sorrow, I've gone deeper into the arms of God who actually goes ever lower, saying that he will go lower and he will bring um, the comfort that we need. And comfort is, um, is bound up at its very core with the fact that he is mighty and he is mighty to save and he is bringing justice. So um, this chorus is from um, the book of Amos where he says, justice is going to roll down like a mighty river. So um, sing it if you know it.
guys know this old, um, this old Irish folk tune? Uh, sing it with me. My feet are strong, my eyes are clear, I cannot see the way from here, but on we go, he knows the way, and
Welcome, David Leonard. He's going to speak um, Psalm 23. I wrote this uh, particular translation, which is from The Voice. I wrote it in Sharpie above my sink. So it seems appropriate on a night of celebration and remembrance to read this one in these words. The Eternal is my shepherd. He cares for me always. He provides me rest in rich green fields beside streams of refreshing water. He soothes my fears. He makes me whole again, steering me off worn, hard paths to roads where truth and righteousness echo his name. Even in the unending shadows of death's darkness, I am not overcome by fear. Because you are with me in those dark moments, near with your protection and guidance, I am comforted. You spread out a table before me, provisions in the midst of attack for my enemies. You care for all my needs, anointing my head with soothing, fragrant oil, filling my cup again and again with your grace. Certainly your faithful protection and loving provision will pursue me where I go, always, everywhere. I will always be with the eternal in your house forever.
have come up from the last two recording projects from Psalms and God's Highway. These two albums are fundamentally live albums. There's not an audience, but we have loved the experience of setting up in a living room together. These two albums were both recorded that way, and so now to get to do that and to have a room full of friends and family here in Nashville at the Art House is such a treat because it feels like it brings the hospitality part in. That's what you hope for when you're recording a studio album, but you don't exactly have the connection points. So when you're actually in a living room together like we are today, there's so much more of an exchange of energy and love and community that happens when we sing together. And one of the things about these tunes is that I hope for most is that we would sing together, that we would recover the the art of folk music, which is like sitting on the porch or sitting in the chapel or sometimes even on a Sunday morning, but not exclusively. And whatever that feels like, what we do and what we hope to do is start a chain reaction where when that happens and we are together, then we hope it will just ripple out and that more people would find community by way of singing and singing God's words back to him in a new way. Well, we have another special treat tonight. I would love to introduce you to a new friend of mine. I have been a big fan of her work for some time now and um, just has been such a joy to cross paths and to be able to connect around these songs. And I have a very new song um, that we'd love to play for you tonight. And just please make a warm welcome to Miss Liz Weiss. I will hold your right hand right beside you. My word is true. I am continuously, continuously. Yeah. 
and gentlemen, Liz Weiss. Thank you. things that's changed or that I've thought about a lot in these songs and in the last few years is displacement of home, displacement of heart. The first song that I wrote for the Psalms album was My Soul Finds Rest. The text is from Psalm 62 and 63. In it, I felt like I was in kind of a wilderness place that God began to work in my heart and, and show me that my home was not a particular address on a street in a house, but that my home was a deeper sense of belonging in Him. I experienced it in some really painful ways, but I experienced it in ways that I don't think I could have experienced so fully without the pain. So when we got into my friend's apartment in Brooklyn to record the first notes of the Psalms album, the first song that we recorded that morning was All You Refugees. I looked out over the New York skyline and I thought, oh, this song is not about what I thought it was about. I thought it was about nature and trees and the, and the creation singing us forward, and it is that. But it was also looking out over this city that represents all these stories and narratives of people walking and finding and seeking and there's so much beauty to that and so much complexity that I related and resonated with. And so singing Welcome Home, creation to creation, horizon to horizon, it was like the human story became the backdrop and the landscape. It was what I looked out to see and I experienced it even as the Lord was making His home in my heart in a new way that it wasn't Nashville, Tennessee, it wasn't Brooklyn, New York, it was wherever you go. You have a place that you belong and nobody can take it from you. There is this grounding that holds us and becomes an anchor in any kind of storm of life. 
When we sing it together, this is a resonant memory of how we see God meeting us past, present, and future.
my portion in my cup Pour it out for me, you fill me up With oil you have anointed me And as I run, I want to rest To feel your peace within my chest Like me I had this dream that I was in a car and my daughter was waiting to get picked up and I told her, I'm gonna come right back, I'm gonna pick you up. She was waiting at the curb at an airport. I wasn't driving the car, I was like in the back and I didn't have any control over when we stopped or how fast we went or what was gonna happen, but I knew we had to go get the car and then come pick her up with all of our bags. And she was about six years old at the time, so very vulnerable image in this dream. And then I couldn't get out of the car and the driver wasn't stopping yet. And so we'd circle around at the airport, you know, this kind of um, where you're making the rounds and you're waiting to get out. And finally, I couldn't wait anymore. And I jumped out of the car and ran over and she was crying at this point. And I threw my arms around her and I said, um, I, I'm always coming back for you, like I'm here. There was resolution in the dream, but I was still very emotional when I woke up. I was shared it with a friend and my friend said, Sandra, I think you're the little girl on the curb. And, and in so many ways in our stories, there is the sense that we are waiting at the curb to know that God is coming back to make it okay. And that he has said, I am coming and I have a plan. And in the dream, I got to experience being the mother and being the one who was um, earnestly waiting and planning and aiming and eventually running toward her. But she couldn't experience that yet, not fully. I don't know what the weight of dreams like that are, other than to say I think it's a reminder of God's comfort, His heart toward us, that He is like that loving parent that is running and that is earnest and that is holding all things in His control and that He is coming back and, there, and that there will be a day when we will remember these things without the tears and we will say together, He has done great things.
doxology together. Praise God from Cry. 